All right, scholars, let's do number 13. We only have two left, and hopefully these are helping you if you're struggling on this in the step-by-step -step walkthrough. All right, scholars, let's look at this one. f of x is equal to 1 over x squared. Well, here's the cool thing. Do I need to factor this one? And the answer is absolutely not, because it's just 1 over x squared. All right. So let's start in order with what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to look for our vertical asymptote. Okay, our vertical asymptote is where the denominator is equal to zero. So guys, let's do this. X squared is equal to zero. Take the square root of both sides. It's going to be zero, right? So my vertical asymptote is at X is equal to zero. And so it's going to be right here along my Y axis. All right, so then the next thing we look for are any holes. Well, in this case, there are no holes. Why are there no holes? Because there is no common factor in the numerator and the denominator, right? So then what do we look for next? Then we look for zeros. Why is that? Well, when we look for our zeros, remember, we go where um, the numerator is equal to zero. Guys, look at this. If that's the case, we have one is equal to zero. Does that make sense? No. So we have no zeros, which is telling us it's not going to cross the x axis. Okay, so far, so good. We're not going to cross the x-axis. All right, so we just did the third thing. What's the next thing we're supposed to look for? Oh, my horizontal asymptotes. Well, when do I have my horizontal asymptotes? Well, this is when we have to look at our degrees of our coefficient. Guys, this degree on the top, if that's one, is really x to the zero. So we know the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So let's go back to your notes, and when that is the case, your horizontal asymptote is that y is equal to 0. So that means we go right here. So it's our x and y axis are our two asymptotes. Now, here's where it's going to be more critical. We actually, it's very critical that you find the other points. So I'm going to pick two points real strategically. I'm going to pick negative 1. To plug in and I'm going to plug in a positive one because I want one on each side of my vertical asymptote. So let's plug in the negative one. So we get one over into our equation. Doesn't not to want to write. Don't know why. Here we go. Let's try it again. One over a negative one squared. Oh, that's one over one, which equals one. So I have a spot here at negative one one so on this side i'm assuming and i can check with more points it's going to look something like that well let's try now positive one well one over one squared is going to be one over one and it's one and i get here one of the value and it's going to come going this way it's basically a reflection of the other side kind of funky isn't it so I don't know. I don't like how that looks. So I'm fixing it. Hopefully yours are better. Um, kind of neat. So that's why we have to use the other points on this one. It's kind of critical. All right. We're done with that problem.